I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to say that I appreciate Brother Biskell and the local church putting on this convention. Uh, I, I hope that I don't have quite as bright a light here shining in my face. If they can just dim that a little bit, I'd like to look at people's faces. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's nice to meet all the ministers. from the, across the country, across Canada, and uh, America, and overseas. I appreciate all the work that has gone into serving the ministers, and uh, I have a little bit of an idea what goes into a convention, uh, not to this magnitude, but, but uh, they have this local church has prepared lunches and meals, and I believe we should give the local church, and especially the women, a hand for all that they have done. I want to just say that a meeting of this magnitude doesn't just happen. It is a result of a vision that God has given Brother Biskell. I'm not talking about a, a, a vision, you know, I'm talking about a, a, de, a desire. And uh, I've known Brother Biskell, and I'm going to age myself when I say this, but I've known him for about 35 years, uh, since the early 70s. And I, I was wondering this afternoon how many are here tonight that were present at the dedication of the log church. Not that went to the log church, but were present at the dedication. Can I see your hands? I don't hardly see anybody. Well, it just goes to show they were just a small group of people at that time. And uh, Brother Perry Green, where are you, Brother Perry? Ah. Uh, Brother Perry Green was preaching the dedication service, and I remember Brother Perry saying something that uh, just kind of shocked me a little bit, and he said, uh, he said, I'm going to prophesy. And, he, and his eyes were wide open. I was used to being in a group that prophesied, yea, the Lord has said, you know, with their eyes closed. And he said, I'm going to prophesy. He said, this place, this church, will become a center from which the message is going to go out from around the world and they'll send missionaries. I'm not exactly sure of the words that he used, but they'll send missionaries out. This will become a center. And that has come to pass word by word. Yeah. Cloverdale Bible Way is known around the world for sending out this message. And I've always had a great respect for Brother Biscoe's ministry. You know, God allows our paths to cross different ones that influence our lives. And uh, I remember when I first met Brother Perry Green, I call him Chief. And uh, uh, I, had, I had been having little house meetings, you know, just uh, in Edmonton, and, and uh, I didn't have much of a vision uh, for outreach and anything like that. I kind of had this narrow-minded idea of us four and no more. And uh, Brother Green has such a wide vision. When I met him, you know, his vision just about meets at the back. And, uh, you know, he, 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 I think he believed that everyone that he came in contact with was ordained to receive this message. And he certainly helped me to widen my vision. And so I just appreciate the men of God that have influenced me. And by God's grace, God has let me be involved in a small way to help spread this message, to help fulfill the scripture, Matthew 24, 14, this gospel shall be preached to all the world for a witness, and then shall the end come. I've also enjoyed the, the ministers' meetings tremendously this week, this, what I've been involved in, you know, what I've, since I've been here, and uh, maybe some of the ministers that came expected to hear doctrinal, uh, uh, you know, things ex expressed, but instead it was ministers that had uh, telling us the burden of their heart. And uh, I, I sense a tremendous feeling of unity among the ministers. So I want to say, let's keep working together for the kingdom of God. Can we stand together to read God's word? Revelations chapter 10. I want to read some familiar scriptures. 
Revelation chapter 10, and then I want to pick up Amos 3. Revelation 10, 1. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was, as it were, the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire, and he had in his hand a little book open. Aren't you grateful that we are preaching from an open book? And he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot upon the earth, and he cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Amos 3, 7 and 8. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret to, unto his servants, the prophets. The lion hath roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God hath spoken. Who can but prophesy? Amen. Heavenly Father, as we are in your presence, we've worshipped, we've sang the songs, we've enjoyed the specials. Now, Father, it comes to this part where we take the bread of life and give it to the people. And I'm just asking that you will break the bread of life tonight. Lord, you were known to those that walked to Emmaus with you. You were known to them in the breaking of bread. Do it again tonight, Lord. Come and break the bread of life. And Father, may the Holy Spirit continue to have total preeminence in this service. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I'd ask you to shake hands with somebody, but uh, maybe it's just somebody close to you. I'm always afraid to say that in Africa because they'll walk around all over the place. It takes half an hour to sit them down again. You may be seated. God bless you, saints. I want to take my text out of verse 8 in Amos 3 there. The lion hath roared. And so the prophet of God told us when a lion roars in the jungle, everything shuts up. When the lion roars, the, the, the hyenas stop yelping, the monkeys stop, the, the birds, everything. Why do they stop? Because their king has spoken. And so the Amos said, the lion has roared, who will not fear? The Lord God hath spoken, who can but prophesy? And so we, if we are in the kingdom of the lion of the tribe of Judah, we cannot help, we cannot help but prophesy because our king hath spoken. Amen. Amen. Uh, but I want you to notice another scripture that uh, in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 that I want to... Uh, read right now where Peter says here, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The first thing I want to draw your attention to, and I'm trying to catch your eyes, uh, it's, it's, it's a little different... Uh, atmosphere you know, because of the lighting, so I'm just trying to get used to it. And uh, you, while you get used to me, I'm trying to get used to you. Right. What, the first thing I want to you draw your attention to, both Christ and the devil are depicted as roaring lions. Both bring fear. Uh, Amos said, the lion hath roared, who will but fear? The Lord God hath spoken, who can but prophesy? That, that the, the, when the Lord God speaks, that's God's voice for today, fulfilling Revelation 10, 3, Christ descending, Christ descending. I was, I, I was, we were streaming when Brother Dioka was preaching that, you know, coming down, and we so enjoyed that. It's Christ descending, crying with a loud voice. It was not a whisper. <coughs> it was not done in some corner. It was not in some secret chamber. It was not, the, the God did not cry in some, you know, in some cult. It was right out in the open. Right. Amen. Matthew 24, verse 26 says, Therefore, if they say unto you, Behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chambers, believe it not. If, it's, if they claim it's in our group only, our church, don't bother going. For, <coughs> for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. 
Amen. It would be a universal awakening. Amen. God's voice is still echoing around the world through the ministry, the voice of many waters. So, but now he, Peter here is warning the church that the devil is also walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, uh, in, in other words, Satan is an imposter. As a roaring lion, he's a copycat. You know, he has no original ideas. He just sees what God does, and then he copies that. So <clears throat> he's an imposter, but Brother Branham said a lion roaring can scare a man uh, to death. How many ever heard Brother Branham say that? He said uh, when a lion attacks somebody, he said they, they, they actually uh, die of fright more than the actual attack. So Satan's purpose in going about as a roaring lion in this age, his purpose is to strike fear into your heart. His purpose is to make you lose confidence in yourself, amen, to, in, in your stand as a Christian to upset you. When you are gripped with fear, you become vulnerable. When you're gripped with fear, you know, and fear is a very real thing. If, it, it, you know, that is the tactic of the enemy even in war. Israel won many battles because the enemy got scared. And so, even, and so when, when fear grips you, you lose confidence in, in, in your own strength. You lose confidence in your ability. Fear is a very real thing if you've ever been gripped by fear. You know, and why, don't, why aren't we just honest this evening? You know, we've all been gripped with fear sooner or one time or another. And when you're gripped with fear, if you've ever experienced it, you know, you, you know what I mean? You, you're almost paralyzed. It just seems like you're, you know, you're just, you're just almost paralyzed. And so look at what happened here in New York. When, when in 9-11, when the terrorist attack on the Twin Towers, the whole world for days and even weeks was controlled by fear. Amen. They, they closed all the airports, not just in America, but also in Canada. Closed the airports. Uh, thousands of people quit flying. Why? Fear gripped the country. Amen. And so, uh, so they can't, people canceled flights. They even canceled professional sports. How many remember that? It was shut down. Government offices shut down. Even Disney World was shut down. People were gripped with fear. They didn't know what was next. So both Christ and the devil are typed here as a roaring lion. Now, uh, but there's, there, there, there's two kinds of fear. Amen. Christ crying is when a lion roareth, is your protection. The, the lion has roared in our day, and that is our God-given protection. Amen. The lion hath roared, Amos said, who will but fear? It's a reverential fear. It's a godly fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So Christ crying out as when a lion roared in Revelations 10, it said seven thunders uttered their voices. Amen. And, and, and it woke up the bride because the prophet said it'll be these seven unknown thunders that will wake the bride and give her rapturing faith. Some people don't like to hear about the seven thunders. My question is, are you still sleeping? If you're not sleeping, something woke you up. You know, it is possible to be woke up sometimes and not know what woke you up. You know, a dog barked or a car horn, a car horn or somebody nudged you, you woke up and you don't know what woke you up. But if you are awake this evening, it was those seven unknown thunders that woke the bride and are giving her rapturing faith. But the devil is working now, fighting the fulfillment of Revelations 10. Not through the Vatican, but right inside the message ranks. Amen. Trying to take away your protection. The roaring lion is your protection. It alerted the bride to the attacks of the devil. It uncovered his tactic. So the protects... It's protecting her from the devouring, roaring lion. I want us to turn to another scripture in 1 Peter 1, 13, where, where uh, Peter says in verse 13, he said, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, watch this now, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you when? At the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Make sure you have a, the proper protection 
gird up the loins of your mind, hope to the end, there'd be a special grace. When the headstone came down, it, it, was, it came forth crying, grace, grace. There would be special grace brought to you in our day at the revelation or the unveiling of Jesus Christ. So Peter is warning, we need our minds protected in this day. How many will agree with that? We need our minds protected. When? At the revelation of Jesus Christ. So because our mind is the battleground, the, the, the war zone. The, so Peter warned us, be sober, be vigilant, keep watching, keep, keep your eyes open. Why? The imposter is on the prowl. The devil is your adversary. The devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. I looked up that word, uh, you know, we have, even though we don't know anything about Greek, but we can look into, brother, you know, we can just type in the, the, you know, the word and then we can bring it up. So the word devour means to swallow down, to, 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 to drink down, to swallow up, to destroy. So here's the warning of Peter to us in the last days. The warning is you're going to be attacked. You're going to, you not might be, you are going. Just like, just like uh, I think they, have, they had a red alert this, this uh, last week because of the uh, London and the Glasgow at, uh, airport attack. So the, um, the, and the, in America, they tell us it's not if you're going it's to, not, it's not whether you're going to get attacked, it's, it's when. So, the, so if, if you are a son of God, if you're a daughter of God, the devil will attack you. We might as well face the, face the music. The devil, his objective is to maim you. His objective is to put you out of commission, to kill you spiritually. And so usually his first move is to pull you away from your God-given protection, which is the word. Amen. The word you're under. Eve was protected as long as she stayed under her husband's protection. Amen. Brother Branham said, your pastor is your husband, spiritually speaking. I, I know Brother Gerd brought the, uh, the balance on that during the minister's meeting, so I don't want to explain that, but, but that's what Brother Bannon said. Your pastor is your husband, spiritually speaking, so the devil will try to pull you away. Have I got your attention? Yes. The devil will try to pull you away from a God-ordained ministry. Pull you away from fellowship of the saints. Then when you're pulled away from the fellowship, then you're an easy prey for the devil. For the devil, he doesn't... But here's the problem. Here's the thing. He doesn't come as the devil. He comes as a, he comes disguised as a roaring lion. He's, he comes as a minister of light. Amen. With a superior revelation than your pastor. Amen. His purpose is to pull you away from your protection. I told the church back in Edmonton, how many people in our city have become maimed by the devil... Amen. Crippled up spiritually, can't walk, don't go to church anywhere, say they don't even need a pastor anymore. Amen. Why? You know, they can't even find their way back. You see their children backslidden. Satan hates a word-based church. You might as well know this. Satan is after every God-ordained ministry. Brother, Brother Hammond, I'm sorry you have to hear the same message that I preached at your place. At least I don't have Homer Longoria here to put up his hand. That's, he's heard that one twice. <laughs> Satan hates a word-based church. And so be, because of all the work that, has, that the Cloverdale Bible Way has done, you might as well know Satan hates this assembly. Yeah. He hates this assembly, and he is determined to destroy you. Amen. So the devil is not, he's out to maim, to destroy every one of us. But, and, and here's the thing, God will not stop the devil from attacking the believers. Amen. 
He has given us our protection. Christ coming down with the open book and cried as when a lion roars is our protection. The message of the hour is our protection. When the seven thunders sounded, that is our protection. Amen. So God has always protected his children behind the word for their day. Now, uh, Paul tells, how many know that Brother Bram said that the Ephesian church was the model church? And, and so it was, it, was, uh, it, was the, it, it, was, it was the model church of, of the early church. Now, Paul, after preaching to the uh, Ephesians on predestination, he preaches predestination, he preaches election. He preaches that you're sealed unto the day of your redemption. Amen. He places the fivefold ministry. All those things. Then he ends up in chapter 6 and says you're going to be attacked. Amen. He said, put on the whole armor of God. Amen. In this model church, this, the, 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 this church that was, that was spiritual, that could receive, that could receive the uh, preaching on election and placing and all these things, received the fivefold ministry, then he ends up saying, you're going to be attacked, so put on the whole armor. Yeah. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God. If we ever needed the whole armor of God, it's in our day. Yeah. When Satan is going about as a roaring lion, knowing his time is short, Amen. He's, he's on the prowl. Now, God, uh, God will not stop the devil from attacking you. He has put us all on a free moral agency. God would be unjust to, to, if he kept you from being attacked by the devil when he allowed the devil to attack Adam and Eve, when he allowed them to, the devil to attack Job, even the, 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 the private conversation that we heard about the other day, you know, that, that the, the devil and God had about Job, amen? So God would be unjust if he, he allowed Elijah to be attacked, he allowed Daniel to be attacked, he allowed the prophets to be attacked by the devil. God put us all on the same basis as he did Adam so he could choose. I believe it was Brother Gerd that put that brought this to our attention the other day here. He said, God put us on the same basis, um, God put Brother Branham, rather, on the same basis as he, you know, as he did all, everyone else, yeah. that he could choose. Yeah. Because thou hast chosen, yeah. the chosen, the narrow path, the harder way, yeah. amen, and it is my way. Right. You see, Brother Branham was not pushed through a pipe. Right. He had some decisions to make. And see, he, because thou hast chosen the narrow path, the harder way, and it's my way. Because of this momentous decision that thou hast made, a huge portion of heaven awaits you. Amen. So, Adam was the son of God with all the authority of heaven behind him. Yet, yet he was subject to the devil's attacks. So, just the same as the second Adam was, he put him on the same basis. Adam, I mean, Jesus Christ was tempted, Brother Ram said, in all points. That's the scripture. He said he was tempted by women. It's hard for us to see that. He was tempted by money. He was tempted by popularity. But the, I want you to, I want to get to a point here. What he... Satan attacked the very foundation of Christ. He quest he tried to get him to question his messiahship. He tried to get him to question. He said, "If thou be the son of God, amen, if thou be the son of God, then then he tried to get him to doubt who he was." And if that same devil is right here in this auditorium tonight, he's going to try to get you to doubt who you really are. He tried to get him to doubt his messiahship. He said, if thou be the son of God, make these bre stones bread. If thou be the son of God, cast yourself down from the temple, for it is written. You know, the devil knows how to quote. Amen. What was the devil doing? He was trying to get Christ to, to doubt who he was. He was trying to spread his unbelief. Over Satan, oh, oh, the Satan was trying to spread his over unbelief over Christ. If thou be the, uh, the Son of God, do this, do that. And if he did that to Christ, 
Don't you think he'll try to get you to doubt who you are? Hallelujah. And God allowed every one of the prophets to be severely tried. And uh, he put them all on the same basis he, uh, as, he, as he did Adam and Eve. What about the three Hebrew children? Amen. They were chosen of God. They were elected by God. Amen. Uh, God never, God, God allowed them to go right into the heat of the furnace. But he was there. Amen. But he never stopped Satan's attack. Amen. He never, he never, he, Satan put, put real pressure on them. He said, bow down. Bow down to this image. He tried to get them to bow down to an image of man, a holy man. Amen. He said, if you don't bow down to this holy man, Brother Bram said it was an image of Daniel. He said, I will cast you into the fire of furnace. I like this. I want you to catch what I want you to he, he, they, they said, oh, we're not ashamed. We're not afraid to answer you. We don't have to have a, a counsel. We don't have to worry. About, we're not worried about what we're going to answer. He said, we're, 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 we'll answer you right now. He said, our God is able to deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we're not bowing down to the image. We're not bowing down to any man-made image. Neither will the bride of Jesus Christ bow down to any image of a man, whether in the message of a holy man. Amen. She knows who she is, and she knows who God is. That's one thing that I realized those three, the three Hebrew children, they knew two things. They knew who they were. They were covenant people, and they knew their God. Hallelujah. Today, the devil is going about as a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. He's just, he's, he's really not just trying to make things hard for you. He's actually out to kill you. Amen. He's out to, he's out to destroy you. Didn't Jesus say the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy? But I am come that you might have life, life, and that you might have it more abundantly. I wouldn't trade this life of this message for anything. I was in the world. I don't like to talk about my life, but I was in the world. I know what it, what it, what it presents, what it gives you. It doesn't even hold a candle to the life. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. He comes to steal your joy. The devil comes to, to kill your influence and to destroy your testimony. We are fighting the same devil right now. Amen. In this message, we are fighting the same devil that killed the saints in the dark ages. Amen. 68 million. What have we got in Canada? About 30 million? 32 million? More than twice. More than twice the population of Canada was killed, murdered, burned at the stakes. Did God stop it? Did God say, oh, no, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it. You can't touch them. They're my children. They were put on free moral agency, the same as you and I. Amen. God didn't stop them. They were under, they, were, they, they had a choice to make. They could stand or they could, they could stand for the truth or they could recant. They lived by the ox anointing. I wish I had some time, but I got, to, I got some things I want to get into here. But they lived by that ox anointing. They were under the anointed word for their day. We'll meet them one of these days. We'll meet them one of these days. Brother Hammond, do you believe we'll meet them? We're, you know, we'll ask them, what age did you come out of? Uh, the, 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 the ox age. The ox age. We'll, we'll be amazed. How did you ever do it? How could you stand to see your husband tortured? To see your wife, their belly ripped open and the unborn babies taken out, burned at the stake. How could you ever stand it? They, you know what they'll tell us? We'll almost worship them because they're such, they're, they, you know, they're such heroes. You know what they'll tell us? It was nothing to do with me. I live by the anointed word for my day. There was an anointing came down from the presence of God. And I live by that anointing. 
they'll maybe, maybe they'll turn around and ask, what age did you come out of? Oh, Laodicea. Laodicea? Hey, everybody be quiet. Stop testifying. Here is somebody. Here's a preacher. Come stand up, Brother Barry. Here's a preacher that actually... Oh, you got arthritis? No, <laughs> Here's a preacher that actually made it in the Laodicean church age. Amen. When, when, when the prophet said money, women, and popularity was taking them falling, falling here. Here's a preacher that actually made it in the Laodicean church age. Amen. Here's a woman that, that made it. Here's a teenager. Amen. How did you ever do it? You know what? Our answer will be the same. Amen. It wasn't, it, it wasn't anything I did. There was an anointing. Came from the presence of God. Amen. And I live by that anointing. It did not come from Germany. It did not come from Edmonton. Amen. That anointing didn't come from Jeffersonville. It came from the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. But you see, the devil, the devil thought he devoured them, that he killed them all. But you see, when he plundered, when the devil plundered 68 million believers, men, women, and children, he, God, God actually turned the whole thing around. Oh, I love this. God actually turned the whole thing around and, and, and the devil, by killing them, actually helped them secure themselves a place in the resurrection. Everyone that went to the grave was secured a place in the resurrection. Glory. How many believe that? Amen. So the devil is on the loose in this last age, seeking whom he may devour. He knows he hasn't got the law on his side like he did in the dark ages. Uh, state and church were one. Now he, his, his d devices are more subtle. Amen. More deceptive. He's trying to kill you spiritually. Amen. War with worldly influence. You know, there's so much worldly th things come in, you know, through, through television, through movies, through the lust of the flesh, and through the internet. All kinds of pornography on it. He's trying to... So worldly fashion, worldlyism, Brother Manson, is the number one sin of the day. Or false doctrine trying to catch you off guard to, to separate you from the, from the body of Christ. Amen. Separate you, pull you away from your protection. He's trying to pull you away from, 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 from your brothers and sisters. Maybe I'm just speaking to a handful, but I, 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 I believe the message is going to get across. Amen. He's, try, he's trying to pull you away from your protection. I, I got a video. I think, Brother Gideon, I think I got it in, in, uh, in South Africa uh, when I was there some years ago. Uh, anyway, it was about some animals in the Serengeti Valley that's between Tanzania and Kenya there, how the lions hunt the wildebeest. Anybody ever saw that? And so it's, it, it, really, it really is quite a thing to watch because you see the, 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 it's the same thing with, with the, the, the lions come in, they, you know, the, 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 the bulls, they, they, they're, they're all standing kind of with their heads just like we were in the minister's meeting. You know, we're all kind of protecting one another. And so, so the lion, he won't, protect, he won't run after the bull, but he'll, 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 he'll run in and, and kind of get, get them scattered, try to get them scattered, you know, and separate the weak ones and, uh, from the herd and wear them out. Then he goes in for the kill. A wolf does the same thing with an with, 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 uh, with elk or a deer. So P Peter, Peter warned us, he said, be sober. Stay calm. Stay collected. Don't be flighty. Don't run because somebody else is running. That's the tactic of the, of the lion to get them running. That's the tactic of the devil. Brother, brother uh, Searle, uh, you'll, you'll, I, I did something one time that <laughs> kind of got in trouble with my wife over. Uh, when I was in New Zealand, I had been at brother, where's brother Derek? Doesn't really matter, but he's, ah, shalom. I'd been, a, I'd been in the North Island, and uh, 
I was, no, that must, I must have been at, 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 in from Brother Searle's. T- anyway, we rented a car and drove to the South Island. And, uh, of course, you'd be driving the wrong side of the road there. It must be the wrong because we drive on the right side. <laughs> and so I, I, I tried something, you know, they, they, have the, they, have, they, have, they have way more sheep there than they do people. <laughs> they got millions of sheep and I think three million people. Anyway, I, I tried something, I just, I wanted to see how, how these sheep would react. So I, I was driving and I went beep beep and there was sh- the whole uh, hills are full of sheep, just full of sheep. And, and th- these, these sheep on the hilltop could not hear the beep beep. It was only ones that were close to the fence. So I went, I just went beep beep and they started running. Before you know it, the whole, the whole hill was running. <laughs> so then I d- did it again, my wife said, don't do that, you got them all disturbed. But I wanted to see if this really worked again. It just went beep, beep. A few miles down the road, the same thing. Only these few heard the beep, beep. But you know, they were starting to run. And that's the tactic of the devil. Bring something. Bring some confusion. Bring something in the local church. Get something going. Amen. Get some of the weaker ones separated. Then he goes in for the kill. Divide. That's always been the devil's tactic. Uh, divide and conquer, separate the people, you know, and so forth. You know, I, I know that there's some preachers say that if a church is really solid on the word and the pastor preaches the word and knows his position, Satan could never divide the flock. People actually believe that, that if, if the pastor is really on the word, Satan could never come in and divide the flock. Uh, do you believe that God knew his position? Do you believe that the heaven is run by the word? That's what Brother Branham said. Lucifer split away one-third of the angels from God. Amen. Angels that God had created because he came up with a higher revelation. That spirit got on him, I will ascend. I will ascend. And once that spirit gets on somebody, it's hard to get that spirit off them. Amen. That same angel of light that, 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 that split away from, from God, that the Lucifer is on earth today going about as a roaring lion. You know, you might say this evening, you might say, he can't get me. I'm in the message. Amen. I, he, can't, he can't get me because I'm elect. I, I, I'm predestinated. No matter what I do, I'll be there. Well, that sounds awful nice. But that's not the attitude that Peter had when he warned the saints. He said, be sober. Amen. Amen. Stay calm. Don't go by feelings. Don't make rash moves. He said, make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Amen. Amen. Be vigilant. Watch. Stay awake. The prophet said, don't take some new thing. And he said, they're flying everywhere. But don't you take some new thing. He said, God has told us, has declared to you what truth is. Amen. Amen. So the devil will use anything he can to get you sidetracked. You know, he'll, he'll, use, your, he'll use your job. He'll, he'll, he'll use the economy. He'll get you to move somewhere away from fellowship because you can make more money. Don't move to Alberta just because we've got a booming economy. If God has placed you in, uh, in, under this ministry, you stay right here. Amen. 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 God, you know, you know, get you out of the will of God with natural things. The Bible says in the parable of the sower, the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and that person becomes what? Unfruitful. Amen. Gets too busy. You know, a a booming economy has some real bad parts to it. People get too caught up with with, with their work. You know, no time to pray. We've heard about that in the minister's meeting. That really spoke to me. No time to pray. No time for tapes. No time to read your Bible. Amen. No time to go to church. Then 
Now, now Satan has got you where he wants you. Amen. Then because you haven't been feeding on the word you, you, like you should, you're weak. Then he'll attack you. Amen. He'll parade some sexy woman in front of you. Oh, not me. Yeah, sons of God are, have a weakness. The sons, oh, they don't. Sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. So they'll parade some sexy woman in front of you, attack you with lust. Maybe try to upset your home, upset your marriage. Amen. Maybe lose your temper. I guess that only happens in Edmonton. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so get you so discouraged, you know, because now, you've, now you're discouraged because, you know, you, you say, I might as well give up. I might as well give up. I might as well go out and get drunk. The devil is deadly with discouragement. The devil is deadly with discouragement. That's one of his most powerful weapons in this age. When you are discouraged, you know, you're, 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 most, you're in a most vulnerable condition. Amen. Then he'll shoot his poison darts at you. Amen. The first thing he'll tell you, the church that you're going to, the people don't love you. Yeah, you know, there's no love in this church. Nobody cares. Too many clicks in this church. Nobody cares. Uh, you, you know, you, I, missed, I missed three services and nobody even phoned me. When you miss church, you open yourself up to the devil's attack because the word says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. That is your protection. Hallelujah. You came out from the protection of the word. When you get discouraged, listen friends, we all get discouraged sometimes. I want to get into something here. When you get discouraged, regardless of how you feel, you've got to believe what the word says about you. That is your protection. That is your weapon. That is your armor. The prophet said the minute you disbelieve one word of God, you are disarmed. So it's your, make sure you keep your protection. I believe one of the greatest revelations that we need in this age is to recognize who we are. Are you going to give me about half an hour to explain that? How about the rest of you? Okay. I believe that's one of the greatest revelations we need, who we are. Brother Branham said, oh, if the church only knew its position. He said, one day it will, then the rapture will go when she knows who she is. Yeah. Hallelujah. I believe, that, I believe that the mysteries that God unfolded in our day are all to help us to recognize who we are. Yeah. Not to get us to fight one another. Not to get us to, I know more than you. The mysteries that God revealed are to show us who we are. Yeah. Next time you listen to the rapture message, just see what Brother Branham winds it down to. See that you're a seed gene of God. You are in your father. Amen. That eagle was always an eagle to begin with. He's trying to show us who we are, where we come from. And what, 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 what good does it do to know what happened in the Garden of Eden, you know, to have a revelation of the serpent seed, if you don't recognize that you're a seed gene of God? It's not much good to know that the seventh seal has been revealed unless you have seen your name under that seal. Unless the opening of the seal called your name. You see, the word of the Lord always, the word of the hour rather, always calls the elect of the hour. I want to just give some examples. What gave, what was it that gave Elijah the power to overcome the roaring lion in his day? My answer is his faith or his revelation of who he was. Amen. You know, there's all kinds of things we could talk about Elijah, you know, but, but you can tell by his prayer that he prays. First of all, he tells him, you go ahead. You go ahead. You know, you're, you're many. You go ahead and sacrifice first. And, and they, they went and he said, they just went ahead and had themselves a great time. And, and finally he mocked them. He said, maybe you should scream a little louder. 
When those 400 were jumping on the altar, they, 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 he, he said, maybe you're, you're, God, you're obviously there's a God you're serving. Maybe you should scream a little louder. Or, and, and so maybe he's asleep or maybe he's on a fishing trip. <laughs> so he's gone somewhere. So, they, so they, they, they took his advice and they cut themselves and screamed and prophesied how long had a charismatic move until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Elijah the prophet came near, and you can tell he knew who he, who he was by his prayer. He said, Hear me, Lord, that this people might know that thou art God, that I am your servant, and that I did all these things at thy word, that this people may know that thou hast sent me, and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. What was it? What was it that, that, that gave John the Baptist the power to overcome the, the roaring lion in his day. He knew who he was. Are you the Christ? He said, no. He said, are you Elias? He said, no. Isn't that strange? Wasn't he Elias? He was a prophet. He knew which Elijah they were talking about. He said, no, I'm not he. Well, who are you? We, wanna, we have to give a, a, an answer to those that sent us. He said, I... He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as saith the prophet Isaiah. He knew who he was. Amen. Amen. When you know who you are, the devil cannot push you around. Amen. Amen. The, the, Brother Branham said, the devil knows if he can get the people, if he, can, if he can get people, if he knows that if the people get the true revelation, of the true church and what she is, Amen. what she stands for, that she can do the greater works, she will be an invincible army. If they get the true revelation of the two spirits within the framework of the Christian church and by God's spirit discern and withstand the Antichrist spirit, Satan will be powerless before you. Amen. Another one in the revelation of Jesus Christ is this. There is nothing of such prevailing power as a revelation of the Word. Amen. It is the revelation of God that will give you authority over the devil. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. So God will not protect you from the devil's attacks, but he equips you with what you need to overcome the devil. So recognizing who you are, recognizing that you're a son of God, you're a daughter of God, I believe is an essential revelation to overcome the devil's tactics in this evil age. Amen. The reason that God gave you the revelation of what happened in the Garden of Eden was not so that you could identify the serpent seed. Did you understand what I said? I don't believe that the reason God gave us the revelation of what happened in the Garden of Eden uh, was so that we could identify serpent seed, but that we would know what lineage we come out of, where we come from. The reason God opened up the seven seals in this last day was not only to identify the trail of the serpent in the, in the denominational system, but to identify the true seed, to identify the bride, who she is, amen, and so that we come from God and are going back to God. What was it that gave Jesus the power that he had? He recognized who he was. Can I read that? In perfect faith. He said, Brother Ram said, he relied upon what he was. He relied knowing that he was the word. And he had faith in, who, in God who had made him the word. He was God, the word was in him. And that gave him faith because... He understood his position. He knowed what he was because the scripture had said he was this. And everywhere the scripture proved that he was exactly what the scripture said he would be, he knew who he was. Now watch. Therefore, he relied upon what God had made him. And if he did that, can't we rely upon what God has made us? Yes. Believers? How many believers here tonight? Yeah. If you are a believer here tonight, 
You did not make yourself a believer. God made you a believer. Can't we rely upon what God has made us? Believers? Then he says, if you are a believer, you have faith in what you are. You, ha you are a believer. Now, there's only one thing you have to do then. Have faith in what you are. Have faith. I didn't make this up, friends. This is your prophet speaking. Amen. Have faith in what you are. Have faith in what the Word says you are. Amen. Brother Perry, I've quoted you around the world. I don't usually quote preachers too much, but I, I've quoted this around the world. Brother Perry said, I would rather believe what the Word says about me than what I know about myself. Amen. Is that close? <laughs> Amen. So have faith in what the Word says you are. My, my, the Word has some tremendous things to say about you. Have you got a little time for me to tell you some of the things that the Word says about you? The Word says, I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. The Word says, and when I say a word, I can quote from the message too. It's the spoken word. The Word says, I am a seed gene of God. The Word says, I was in the mind of God before the foundation of the world. Amen. The Word says, I was predestinated to, to receive the Word in this age. The Word says, I'm a new creation. The Word says, all things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. The Word says, He became sin for me, that I might become the very righteousness of God. If we believe, Brother Bram said, if we believe that he, that, that he literally became sin for us, do we? Then we must also believe that by our union to Him, we have become the very righteousness of God. The prophet said to believe one is to believe the other. To reject one is to reject the other. Amen. The brother Branham said the believer that is in Christ can no more perish than God can perish. When I first heard some of these quotes, I just about boggled my mind. But I, I use them all the time now. The, if you're in Christ, you can no more perish than God can perish. Why? Because you're a part of God. The Word says I am righteous. If I had got, out, got up here at the beginning, after Brother Biscoe handed me the pulpit, and I would have said, I want, you, I want to say something to you. I am just as righteous as God is righteous. You would have walked out. You would have probably walked out. But the atmosphere is such now that we can say it. You see? Amen. Brother, the, the, Brother Bram said, I... I the, the, the word says, Brother Branham said, I am righteous. He said, I am sinless. I am the virgin, I am the virtuous bride of the Son of the living God. The word says, I am not just forgiven, I am justified. I never sinned in the first place. We need a revelation of some of these things. I never sinned in the first place. In the rapture message, Brother Bram said, she was foreordained, she was trapped into this. I say this because we're trapped into these hybrid bodies. We were trapped into this. Now when she heard the truth and came forth, the blood cleansed her, and she stands there virtuous, no sin on her at all. The Word has some good things to say about you. Amen. The Word says in St. John 5, 24, one of my favorite scriptures, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has eternal life right now, will never come into the judgment, but has already passed from death unto life. That's what the Word says. The Word says that I, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. The Word says that by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. The Word says in Ephesians, 4, in Ephesians 1 that I am predestinated unto the adoption. 
How many believe we're in the age of adoption? We're in the age of adoption? We are predestinated unto the adoption. Then he says in Romans, that he said, we, the, now let me just see if I, I just forget the, how the scripture reads. <laughs> we're waiting for the adoption. We're not waiting anymore. I thought we agreed that we're in the adoption age. This is the age of adoption. So Paul said we are waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. I read a lot into that. I like what Brother Gerd, he kept saying we read between the lines. But really this is on the lines too. Can you understand what he's saying there? You are predestinated. Uh, unto the adoption. The last stage of adoption is what? The body change. You know what that means? You know what that means, Brother Guy? You're going to make it. If you are predestinated to the adoption and the final stage of adoption is the body change, and if you're predestinated to the adoption, Amen. That means you're going to make it. Yeah. If, this, if this stage wasn't so high, I'd go and walk around here a little, but I don't want to break my legs. What if, what if Jesus Christ walked up to you, sister, and says, you've struggled with this, you've struggled with that, you've struggled with that, but by the grace of God, you're going to make it. Yeah. You're going to make it. If he come, he, if, he, if Jesus Christ came to each one of your seats and says, you're going to make it. You're predestinated to the adoption. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. There's be nobody be able to talk you out of it. Amen. Well, I am telling you as his servant, you, if you are predestinated unto the adoption and you in the last stage of adoption is the body change, which means you are going to make it. Glory. Glory adios. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Word says. I'd rather believe what the Word says about me. Can't we rely, Brother Bram said, have faith in what you are? Have faith in what the Word says you are. The Word says, I'm going in the rapture. Matter of fact, the Word says, I am the rapture. The rapture is not Jesus coming. It's a bride going. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them in the air and to meet the Lord in the air. If we can't believe what the Word says about us, about us, how are we ever going to be in the rapture? How are we ever going to overcome? How are we ever going to conquer the enemy? Paul said we are more than conquerors. Amen. Amen. So we are, we, are, we are in a real battle. We are in a real battle. We are... We're fighting a real, uh, a real devil. Amen. Going about as a roaring lion, but I believe that the revelation of who we are will defeat the devil. The revelation of this hour in the bride is overcoming every obstacle that the devil will throw in your way. Don't let your mistakes get you down or hold you back. Because the prophet said, you're always going to have them. Maybe you've had some mind battles. Maybe you've had some mind battles, lost a few rounds. Maybe you've had thought wrong about a brother. Maybe even during this meeting. You know, the Bible says, gird up the loins of your mind. Let me say this to, the, to you as a, as, a, as, as a group of people. Feed your mind and heart on the Word. Yeah. Gird up the loins of your mind. Feed, don't stop feeding on all the junk that's going around in the message. Yeah. That's not your protection. Be careful. You start feeding on all kinds of junk, you'll pick up that same spirit. Yeah. The Word is your protection. Brother Branham said, a righteous man is not necessarily a sinless man, but one that confesses his sin. Let me just read a little bit about that. I'm just going to drop down here, leave out a little bit. 
The righteous man is not a sinless man. You notice he said, Elijah was a man subject to like passions such as we are. He had his ups and downs like we do. We don't think of Elijah that way, do we? He had his ups and downs like we do. He had his times of wandering, his times when his temper got away on him. He had lots of things that went wrong, but he was still a righteous man because he confessed his unworthiness and believed God, so that's what made him righteous. We're not righteous within ourselves. We're righteous through Jesus Christ. Amen. Brother Branham says, I cannot be sanctified within myself. I am sanctified through Jesus Christ who stands in the presence of God in my place. It isn't my holiness. It's His holiness. My holiness won't work at all, but His does. God, because God done, accepted Him. And in accepting Him, He had to accept me because I'm in Him. Amen. He said, that, that's what makes it real, isn't it? Then we don't have to depend on ourselves. Oh, hallelujah. You know, people, people you, you hear sometimes as a pastor, you hear people say, the devil, the devil keeps telling me. The devil tells you. Well, if you know it's the devil, what are you listening to him for? <laughs> you know, Stop listening to what the devil is saying and start listening to thus saith the Lord. The word says that those that hear the cry of the lion, the roaring of the lion of Revelation 10, as when a lion roared, hear the voice of God, that, that hear the shout and become part of the word, will be in the rapture. Amen. The only way that we will ever be overcomers and go in the rapture is to be under the protection of the word. Not only under the protection, but born of the word. I want to just close up with that. It might take me about five minutes or so to kind of wind that down. But Peter said, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. This, I love what John said in 1 John 3, 9. He said, whosoever is born of God, may God make this one real to us this evening. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Sin is unbelief. He never said you don't make mistakes. He that is born of God doth not commit sin. Amen. Why? His seed. His seed remaineth in him, and he cannot disbelieve God's word. Whosoever is born of God, if you're born of God, the incorruptible seed word of God, you cannot disbelieve God's word. There's nothing in you to disbelieve God's word. You, there, I, I said this to our church just not long ago. I have no problem with any part of the message. I got no problem when Brother Bram said this. If I'm wrong, I just lay it down and say, this is what the prophet said. Here's where I have the problem, right here. This is the guy that I have a problem with. Putting in him into subjection of that word. Of course, you don't have no problem that way, so we might as well move on. So whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Oh, I love that. For his seed. God's seed doesn't come and go, remaineth in him. And he cannot disbelieve. He cannot sin because he is born of God. To be an overcomer, you must believe what the word says about you. You've got to see yourself as part of the word for today. Like Peter on the day of Pentecost. He said, this is that. He didn't say what, what you're seeing over there is, is, is what Joel the prophet spoke about. He said, this is that. I am part of the fulfillment of God's word that Joel the prophet spoke about. He recognized he was part of the fulfillment. The same as Jesus in Luke 4. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He hath anointed me. 
to preach the gospel, to bring tidings, to, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Amen. And he said, he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled. He recognized who he was. How many countless times, friends, have you heard Brother Branham tell the story about the African slaves during the slavery days in America? You heard the story? And so about the broker that came to the certain cotton plantation to buy some slaves, and he saw this young man there. He had his chest out, Brother Branham said. He, he had his head up. He was, he was working hard, and he didn't have to whip him like the other ones. And he said, I want to buy that slave. Do you remember the story? And uh, the boss says, well, he's not for sale. He said, well, what makes him so different? What makes him so different than the rest of the slaves? He said, I, he said do you feed him different? No. Well, is he the boss over them? He said, no. Well, what makes him so different? He said, I wondered for a long time myself till I found out one day that back in the homeland in Africa, his father is the king of the tribe, and because... He is the son of a king. He conducts himself as the son of the king. What is the moral behind that story? This man recognized who he was. And recognizing who he was caused him to have the proper conduct. Amen. Amen. I, I, want, you to, I, want, you to, I want us to remember you have a real enemy. The devil with one thing in mind to destroy you, to kill you spiritually, to devour you. And your, your only protection is the word. I want to make a statement like this now. It's not just hiding behind the word now, but becoming part of the word for today. Becoming one with the word. The, the devil cannot defeat the word. God had Adam and Eve protected behind the word. But when Eve moved from behind the protection of the word, the devil got her. Is that right? So throughout the Bible, as long as they stayed behind the word, they were safe. But when they moved from out from the protection of the word, the devil got them. But God will not be defeated. Watch this. Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Before Christ or anything else was on earth, you see this great mis his great mystery that he chose the bride before there was anything. How many believe you were part of that? He chose the bride, watch, knowing that Eve would fall from disbelieving the word, knowing that she would fall, but he chose a bride that would not fall. I am just one person that believes that. He chose, he chose Adam and Eve, he chose everyone, but in the end time, he said he chose a bride that would not fall. I'm one of them. He chose a bride that would not fall, watch what he said, that would hold to that word regardless of what all the rest of the world would say about it. They would hold to that word. They are predestinated to stand there. The adoption of children by Jesus Christ predestinated the church to that great, glorious stand. How would, how would he have a bride that would not fall? By becoming the Word. By becoming the Word. Not just standing behind it, but by becoming one with the Word, part of the Word. Brother Branham said in perfect faith, watch what he said, you become the Word. As you receive the word. What does he say in Revelations 10, 8 through 11? He's talking about you and I. Take the book. Eat the book. Become one with the word. If I ate this Bible, you would no longer see the Bible. You would just see me. Amen. That's how much we have to become part of the word. Amen. Why will the bride not be deceived? Why is it that the bride will not be deceived or be defeated? Because you are the Word. You cannot defeat the Word. You cannot deceive the Word. You become the Word. As you receive the Word, take the book. 
eat the book. Hallelujah. Brother Branham said that under her messenger, the bride will be the final voice to the final age. Amen. So I, uh, the musicians can come. I've got a little song I want to sing. But uh, why will the bride not be deceived? Why, will she can't, why can't she be defeated? You cannot deceive the word. You cannot defeat the word. And so that's why Brother Branham could, could say he chose a bride that would not fall. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. We are, we are taking the word. We're eating the word. We are born by the word. And you cannot defeat the word. Paul said to the Ephesians, to the, to, the, to, the, to the model church, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. If any age was given the whole armor of God, it's this age. We are covered from head to foot. Brother Ardeal, have you got a flat top guitar there that I can use? No strap? Ooh. No, no pick either. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. You know that song here, there's not one hole in my armor. Jesus covered me well. How many believe that you're well protected by the word for this day? Man, I'm glad I didn't, wasn't thinking that I was on the internet. I would have never done this. <laughs> There's not one hole in my armor. It's real simple. There's not one hole in my armor. Jesus covered me well. I'll never fall if I wear it all. Satan's darts cannot prevail. He's going about as a roaring lion, trying to upset every one of us. Put on the whole armor of God. There's not one hole in my armor. Jesus covered me well.
think God gets weary of hearing that? You think he gets weary of hearing that? Not at all. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, yes. I, I'm a child. I don't believe this building. I don't know what groups have met here, all kinds of different kinds of groups, but I don't believe these curtains, these walls, this material war, this material building has ever heard anyone sing like that. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let's hear it once again. This is the hour of redemption, full redemption. This is the hour he came to claim what he bought. Amen. And it's time for those that were purchased to just declare it. Our brother Hildebrand said tonight so many, many things of what the word says you are. Now, it's not enough to hear it from the preacher. And it's not enough to read it in the scripture. It's not enough to read it in a message. It's not enough to say, Brother Branham said it, or the prophet said it. It's not enough to even say, God said it. You have to say it. You have to say it. You have to say it. The prophet said, until you confess it. I've been telling my church, Taking the quote, Brother Branham said, how long shall I say it? He said, say it until you believe it. Over and over again. Just say it. Repeat it. I am redeemed. Glory to God. I am everything that the scripture has written. It says in the scripture that he might present himself. A glorious church. You have to confess it. I am a glorious church. Not having spot. Oh, that gets difficult, doesn't it? 
not having spot. You might say, well, the bride is spotless, but are you part of the bride? If you're part of the bride, if you have a spot, if you have a spot, then the bride's got a spot. Without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. And without blemish. I know I can just almost hear your thoughts. Well, the in the message and the bride this and so on and it's not enough just to be positive and to think positive and to talk about positive things well i'll tell you how to get rid how to get rid of a spot and that's to confess the full measure of redemption and the full victory of jesus christ i have proven that i've proven that that's the way to have victory over You'll never have victory by just identifying your problem. You've got to identify the victory over the problem. Amen. Amen. He made me spotless. Calvary paid it all. It is finished. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Do you enjoy that tonight? Amen. Amen. I think we'll just sing, it's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the Lamb. We're soon going to be dismissed. We have till 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock is our deadline for being out from here. And uh, we appreciate the staff of this uh, auditorium. They've been working with us for a long time and allowed us to come in. Our brothers, uh, a whole lot of our brothers, I don't know if you saw when they left the church last night, there was a big truck outside. As Soon as you left the church, then they had to start dismantling everything and packing it into the truck. Very sensitive, delicate equipment. And a whole crew of our brothers we're loading all of that equipment and all of these cables and all these various screens and things to bring it over here so we can have the internet so that people, do you know how over 300 locations were streaming this service in the first half hour of this meeting? Over 300 locations. Our brother Hildebrand maybe preached to another couple thousand people without any exaggeration out there. I hope they're rejoicing with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't it going to be a wonderful day when the bride all gathers together and the doors burst open and they come from all tongues and all kindreds and all tribes and all nations? Weren't you blessed to see the about 30, 40 nations on the on the risers tonight, I say, God bless God's servants. But just think what it's going to be like when the bride comes marching in. It's a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Amen. Amen.
and saying, I am a member. All you that are translating, whatever language you sing in, just sing it in that language. It is a glorious church, and I am a member, washed in the blood of the Lamb. himself without a witness that means July 2007 God is not without a witness it's not only a glorious church and I'm a member you are a member but you can say and I am a witness I'm a witness to the spoken word of God the life of that word has come inside Hallelujah, dictating to my life. That's the victory. Glory to God. Are you a testimony to that? He has never left himself without a witness. Bless his holy name. Well, we're going to dismiss you tomorrow night. We'd like to even start a little bit earlier. We have something that uh, we want to make an important announcement tomorrow night. Uh, and we'd like to start around 7, if possible. So you that are living on the, on the U.S. side, remember this is a, a long holiday throughout this week. And the traffic may be very heavy. So you have to come a little bit earlier. Maybe I might suggest you come on this side and just have a bite to eat over here. Get yourself a something to eat in a restaurant and then you're here in lots of time and uh, you that are working if you have to work try to get off a half an hour early or an hour early so you can be here amen, amen. this is wonderful amen. I got thinking about this last year you know we uh, we uh, I didn't announce the meeting right away but we decided to have the meeting I was just I thought It'd be wonderful to have a convention, have a week-long convention. And so I picked up the calendar and just had a look at it. And I thought, well, my, uh, the Canadian long holiday starts on July the 1st. And uh, the U.S., July the 4th is Wednesday. I thought, this North America is going to essentially shut down for that whole week. And that's when people can come. So, all right, we, we, we said it. I didn't spiritualize it, but I thought it was, I thought it was kind of interesting that we had uh, this convention a whole week long, a witness convention. We started on the seventh month, on the first day, and we end on the eighth day. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> in 207 <laughs> uh, 
I don't know how far we can go with that, but I'm not making a doctrine. <laughs> Seventh month. Hallelujah. We're going to be dismissed in prayer. And at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, the ministers will meet here at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. It's our last day. Uh, the ministers and their wives' brunch on Saturday is at the church, so you don't get mixed up. But tomorrow, the ministers are meeting here. All right. Uh, Brother Tom, would you come and dismiss us in prayer? We'll bow our heads. Wonderful Savior, Father, what a thrill it is to hear the Word of God. And Lord, we're so thankful that we have this revelation burning within our souls. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Lord, greater is the roaring of God within the bride of Jesus Christ than that lion that goes about as a roaring lion. So I pray, Lord, that your word has stimulated your people, moving them into the promises of God. Bless them tonight, Lord. Watch over them. And those that have joined with us, revelate them. And move us, Father, into your glorious presence, we pray. Go with us, and may you just attend us in every way in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Give you a safe journey. Give you a good rest tonight. And We'll see you tomorrow evening, Lord willing. Our brother Tim Pruitt will be preaching tomorrow night. So we are expecting another great service. When you're leaving and driving out of this congested parking area, please drive very, very carefully for there's children and just be very, very slow and you know, drive very carefully. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.